Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good, good morning. Well, uh, the first thing to say is that we are not live today. We don't know why we're not live. Uh, we pre-recorded <laughs> this. Be, yeah, it could be for any reason whatsoever. Yeah, we, we pre-recorded this for an eventuality such as whatever it is that's happened today. <laughs> we'll let you know at so some point. <laughs> perhaps it was a flood in the building. Perhaps it was uh, some kind of freak hurricane. Or Maybe we've all been taken out of COVID. Yeah, well, could that be, could be it. You know, it could be anything. That could be it. But anyway, nevertheless, uh, we have got a really, really great morning lined up for you. Yeah. And so please don't tune out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, please just tune in. I just thought of that on the spot. <laughs> Would you believe it? Don't tune catch out. Catchphrase Freeland. <laughs> Lee, catchphrase Freeland. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to worship together. Uh, and then we've got an amazing uh, friend of ours, Steve Nicholson from Chicago. He's going to be speaking to us, bringing God's word to us. Uh, and so don't miss a moment of it. Yeah. Why don't we pray and then we are going to worship. Lord, you are the God of all eventualities. Nothing surprises you. And this moment is ordained by you for such a time as this. And so we lean in, we press in. And that includes in our worship this morning. Father, would your kingdom come as we worship you? We look to you, our maker, our creator, our king, our Lord. And we say we love you, we honour you, and we worship you this morning. Amen. songs be a sign we are here for you we are here for you let your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with your life we are here for you so for you lord we are here for you You are hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy, God. Let your fire fall down. Let us shout, be your anthem, your renown. Fill the sky. Oh 
Okay, let's pray, shall we? Lord, we, we, we love you. We're devoted to you. We worship you because you deserve every breath that we have. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, like I said earlier on, we've got our friend Steve Nicholson speaking to us this morning. Steve, until recently, was the senior pastor of the Evanston Vineyard in Chicago, uh, an amazing leader. Uh, I think led that church for more than 40 years and recently has uh, transitioned to uh, uh, a new senior pastor and is now sort of enjoying his retirement. But we love him um, and he, he, he just always has been so... Um, prophetic uh, and, and uh, bringing such truth in so many ways and, and a dear friend. So over to you, Steve. Uh, good morning, everybody. I am so glad to be able to be a part of uh, your time together here in the UK. We have spent so many years visiting you all and so many of you are our friends. We really love you all and are glad for this opportunity to share with you. And today, I'd like to talk to you about something maybe you've never heard about before, and that is the balm of Gilead. A balm is a fragrant ointment or preparation that's used to heal or soothe the skin. I remember once visiting my aunt. She spilled some hot water and burned her arm, and immediately she went to her aloe vera plant, cut off a couple of leaves, cut them open, and rubbed them on her arm. That particular plant has a sap that reduces pain and aids healing, especially for burns. It's a balm. In biblical times, there was an area east of the Jordan River called Gilead, and it was known for its spices and ointments with soothing and healing properties. People would travel there from all over the region to soothe many ailments and wounds. Therefore, the balm of Gilead was known for its high-quality ointment with healing properties. And the Bible uses the term metaphorically as an example of healing and soothing powers. This balm was the very best that they had for reducing pain and aiding healing. But in Jeremiah chapter 8, when the whole nation is in trouble... He says in chapter 8, verse 21, Since my people are crushed, I am crushed. I mourn and horror grips me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no healing for the wound of my people? They were in a tough spot, and they desperately needed a balm and couldn't find it. There are times... When an entire community is wounded or crushed, there are times when the pain of the people cries out for healing and for relief. And in those times, they look for something that will make it better. They look for a balm. We are living in one of those times. You know, when we all said Happy New Year on December 31st, we had no idea just how difficult and painful 2020 would prove to be. But here we are. We've got a pandemic, racial turmoil, economic inequalities, an incredibly severe recession, and most of us are tired and hurting and frustrated and grieving all our very many losses. We need a balm. During the time that African Americans were enslaved, they needed a balm. And they found that balm in Jesus. They would sing spirituals, kind of their own sort of spontaneous songs, while laboring in the sweltering fields or enduring brutality and the other horrors of slavery. And one of those old spirituals is about Jesus as the balm. Eventually, it was arranged and published by an African-American named Harry Thacker Burley back in 1915. And it goes like this. There is a balm in Gilead 
to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a balm in Gilead. Don't ever feel discouraged, because Jesus is your friend. And if you lack for knowledge, he'll not refuse to lend. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. Jesus could be a balm for you right now. He could be the balm that reduces the pain and brings healing. And if we're going to flourish as human beings, we're going to need a balm for the hard stuff and the painful stuff that still happens in this broken world. And Jesus is the one who can help us do exactly that. And I'd like to mention four groups for whom, in particular, Jesus is the balm. First of all, Jesus is the balm for the broken. To face your own failure and your own brokenness is a hard thing to bear. When we keep doing what we do not want to do, we, we can get pretty discouraged. A lot of people just settle for covering it all up with distraction or addiction. But the brokenness is still there, like a cancer spreading. A lot of people feel like they're stuck with their brokenness and with their regrets, with no hope and no healing and no forgiveness. But Jesus is ready to heal and to forgive all the broken things in our lives. The prophet Isaiah, speaking ahead of time about Jesus the Messiah, said in Isaiah 42, 3, A bruised reed he will not break, And a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. That is to say, when you are no better than a smoldering wick or a bruised reed, he won't throw you away. He will meet your failure and your brokenness with grace and mercy rather than condemnation. He won't run away, and he won't push you away, but instead, he applies the balm of love. In the Gospels, we see this happen when a woman caught in adultery ends up in a confrontation with Jesus, and he says to her, I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. We see it when he comes to Jericho and meets Zacchaeus, the tax collector, the thief, the outlaw, the traitor, up a tree watching, and he honors him and says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to eat at your house today, which changes his life forever. For all those who were broken like them, Jesus is the balm. Nothing you've done, nothing you've failed to do, is greater than the grace of that Jesus has to offer. And his grace will give you a new life, restoring your hope and restoring your self-respect. And if you feel like you keep doing the wrong thing, he can set you free by the power of his love. That's a balm for the broken. You should try it. He's the balm for all your brokenness. Second of all, Jesus is the balm for the sick. When you're sick for a long time, it's easy to get discouraged and lonely. Everyone else seems to be getting on with their lives and leaving you behind. People don't know what to say or they say unhelpful things. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. But Jesus is the balm that will make it better. There's a story in Luke's gospel that I love. It's found in Luke chapter 5, beginning in verse 12. It says, while Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. 
And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Here was a man who, because the leprosy was covering him, had obviously been there a long time. His illness was unstoppable. His illness meant he had to be socially isolated from his entire life. No one was allowed to come near him. No one was allowed to touch him. He had to live outside all the towns and cities. He had to go wherever he went, shouting out ahead, unclean, unclean, so that nobody would get too close. But he found a balm in Jesus, and he came and asked for that balm. And Jesus touched him and healed him. And it's interesting, it's not just that Jesus healed him, but that Jesus touched him. You know, sometimes God's will is not yet done on earth, and we are not healed. But even then, Jesus is with us, and his presence is the balm that brings comfort. Wherever Jesus is, there is some kind of balm that comes for the sick. Third, Jesus is the balm for the oppressed. In the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus went to his hometown and in the synagogue there proclaimed the heart of his ministry. We read about it in Luke chapter 4. And what happens is he's going to quote a prophecy from the prophet Isaiah. So Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 16. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. An essential part of the mission of Jesus is to set the oppressed free to set them free from the lie that they are second class, to set them free from violence and abuse, to set them free from injustice, to set them free from the mental and emotional wounds that afflicted those who have been oppressed. Ever since then, oppressed people have found a balm in Jesus right in the midst of their oppression. In Jesus, they came to understand that they were children of the king, that they were someone valuable and important. In Jesus, they came to understand that even in prison, one can be free. And from Jesus, they came to know that one day, one day, Jesus was coming back to tear down the unjust powers of this world and bring a new age of righteousness and justice. And though we may suffer in oppression now, one day, one glorious day, it's all going to be made right. And if you listen to the old gospel songs and spirituals, that's a pretty common theme, that one day it's all going to be made right, that there's a bomb, and part of that bomb is Jesus is coming back. That's why we who follow Jesus understand that part of our mission is to loose the bonds of the oppressed in our own time, right now, as much as we can. Right now, in our time, there's a great movement going on for the oppressed called Black Lives Matter. All kinds of people and interests have become a part of this movement, and I suppose it's possible I wouldn't agree with everyone that's a part of the movement on everything, but the heart of the movement is to simply ask that our societies and government agencies should recognize and put value on the lives of black people who have historically been the oppressed in our midst. And I believe that's a Jesus thing. Because Jesus has always wanted to be a balm to those who oppressed. 
He has always considered them to be his special people. There is a balm in Gilead, and he's on the march right now in 2020. Lastly, number four, Jesus is the balm for the grieving. In 2020, we've had much to grieve. So many have loved ones to grieve. But we also grieve the losses of wedding celebrations and graduations and sports and birthdays with friends and family and, yes, even gathering as a church. We grieve our lost jobs and businesses and we grieve our plans that were canceled and we grieve schools that didn't happen. The whole world is grieving right now. But Jesus is the balm for the grieving. We may lose all these things now, but what Jesus promises is that in the end, all of that will be far surpassed by the glory of what he's building for us. There is another realm, not that far away, where we will be clothed in glory, where we will see all our loved ones who've gone before, where all our tears will be wiped away and pain and death will be no more. Just before my father died a year and a half ago, he told me he was asking God to hurry up the process of going home to be with Jesus. His body wasn't working well anymore, and he was ready and eager to go to a better place. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 1, 21 to 23, he said, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me, but yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. This truth, that a better life by far awaits us, is a powerful balm for those who face death and for those who are grieving. When my father passed, I had the strongest sense that he was near and that he was in a much, much better place and state. He was young again and shining with joy. If you've even had just a small taste of the glory of God, maybe in an encounter with the Holy Spirit, you know that the fullness must be far beyond our ability to even describe. I've experienced the power of Jesus in my body and the sense of love and power was so much I thought I couldn't contain it. And that, we are told, is just a small little taste of what is waiting for us. And just knowing that brings healing and brings hope. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a balm in Jesus. He can lift you up and set you free. He can wipe away all our wrongs and regrets. He can heal us and comfort us and strengthen us. He can set the oppressed free, and he's working right now to build a new and better home for all of us. If you're discouraged, if you're beaten down, if you're sick, if you're grieving, here's how you can apply that balm to your life. First, tell him all about it. Just tell him. Tell him all about it. Second, think about his love and his grace in his life, in your life. Remember a time when you experienced a little taste of God or Think about one of the gospel stories about Jesus. Then be quiet for a few minutes and just let his love fill your heart. Let him come near to your pain and be that balm. Let him wash over you and through you with his healing presence and you will find that the burden is lighter. There is balm in Gilead and he's waiting for you today. Thanks so much, Steve. Absolutely love that. Well, um, 
we don't know what the notices are because <laughs> we, we don't know uh, we when don't this know has what happened. Week this is going out, <laughs> but there are two things that we do every week. Yeah. The first thing that we do every week is we make an opportunity for people to uh, commit their lives to Jesus. And maybe you've been journeying with us for some time, or maybe it's just today. You think, do you know what? I think this is true. I think Jesus is real, and I want to walk through the rest of my life with Jesus. So we're going to make an opportunity for you right now to become a Christian. And the way that you can do that is I'll uh, say a prayer one line at a time and all you need to do is to repeat that prayer in your own heart or out loud and Jesus will hear every word and it'll be the best decision that you ever made. So let's (laughs) pray. My Father in heaven, I'm so sorry I haven't lived my life with you or for you. I really want that to change. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Father, I receive the forgiveness that the death of Jesus paid for. I give you my sin. You give me your righteousness. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to live my life with you and for you from now on. Amen. 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 And don't forget, if you're watching this live, then uh, in the chat there, it says, I commit my life to Jesus, raise a hand. And you can click the raise a hand button and you're letting the whole world know that something really massive has just happened in your life. So we strongly encourage you to do that. Please do that. The other thing that we do every week is we give money to the work of all that the Lord is doing, not just in Aberdeen or the Shire, but actually all over the world. And God uh, calls Christians, his church family, to be generous. And um, sometimes it's easy, isn't it, to sit back and kind of maybe think, well, you know, finances are a bit tight this week or this month. Um, I, I won't do that. But the opportunity that the Lord wants to make is an opportunity for us to step out in faith with our giving so that he can then show you that he is God and surprise you in all sorts of amazing ways. It might not be that you get exactly the same amount back or anything like that, but God wants to show his faithfulness to you as you prove faithful to him. And so this is just a moment for our church family um, to give our offerings. And the way that you would do that is go to give dot catalyst dot vin and it's going to come up on the screen now and i think you can press the button and it will take you there okay thank you for doing that thank you okay well this is us so uh we're really hoping that normal live service will be resumed next week yeah um uh but until then have a fantastic week god bless you and we'll see you next week god bless (laughs) 